Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 276. Almost heaven in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Oily aliens chase you away with my bullets. Um, the Virginia UFO incident. If you, you know, lots of people have been messaging us on various social medias. Oh, you guys should. Oh my God. We just saw the craziest My UFO God. encounter. My God, the you, the you, I saw Rogan and they were talking about this craziest UFO encounter of all time. I can't believe you guys have never done it. I, I can't believe the theorists have be not fair, already been on it. To be fair, I think I was one of the people that was like, "Hey, you guys, you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild." It's true. <laughs> At least now, probably twice that you. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you if you haven't, if you're not already supporting the show. On Patreon, patreon.com. <clears throat> we do tons of bonus stuff. And over a year ago, well before Rogan, well before this documentary came out, we did uh, a case file on uh, the Virginia uh, UFO incident. And, and I don't want to brag, but I think me and Dan did a better job at bringing you the information and more details of what actually happened. Because the documentary leaves out a fucking ton um, and is boring. But we did a better one over a year ago. But because so many well people have been messaging us and being like, you got to do this. You got to do it. You got to do it. Hey, listen, we're horse. We'll do it. Yeah, buddy. All right. <laughs> hey, so we're doing a there's a new gonna documentary. Us, <laughs> you're going to give us an excuse to talk about fucking vagina. Say, we love talking about vagina. We talk yeah. about it all the time. Bring it Let's on. Let's say we're horse and we're like we're accommodating. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we're horse. We know people are searching this right now. So we're doing it. We're professional <laughs> yeah, podcast right. workers. <laughs> Professional podcast workers uh, deserve for a price. So the, we're going to revisit it. But like I said, <clears throat> if you want our Patreon, we've already done a nice clean hour uh, on this case. But today we're going to revisit it with all four of us. Uh, go through it. And, uh, y you know, the main point, I think, of why we decided to was because there is this new documentary that everyone's been mes messaging about on uh, Rogan. Um, with Jeff Foxworthy, I think is right? <laughs> not his name. <laughs> well, yeah, first, pretty close. I, I tuned into that Rogan episode just because I thought it was Jamie Fox. <laughs> I was disappointed. It was not. No, it was director not. James Fox. He did the phenomenon, and that was a. I think that's the. Is that the Aerial School UFO documentary? Um, I don't sure. think he did the Aerial School one. Isn't that called Phenomenon? No. Though? I don't know, but he's I done a documentary he called school. Phenomenon. And then this one Something is um, like a phenomenon. What was it? Contact in the no contact. No. What was it called? Close contact. Uh, what's the, keep what's going this contact? New? Just keep guessing. <laughs> keep guessing. Moment of contact. Moment of contact. You're close. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah let's keep going. Going, so. eh? uh, going over it, and so we we're like, hey, you know what? Maybe there'll be new relevant information. So we'll spend the week kind of refreshing ourselves on this case file. Well, check yeah, the, the documentary. The internet buzz had now. I don't know if this was dubbed before, but now it's uh, Brazil's Roswell. It's that. It's that popular of a case. <laughs> I, I don't think before th that the interview and in the documentary came out. I don't think it was. Well, I think I, in the confidential over a year ago, Brazil's I said, I, th sure. I, I think I said, this is Brazil's Roswell. Absolutely. And Brazil is no Brazil. Like, I mean, you're in the like golden triangle uh, in this location of for like UFO hotspot. You've got, uh, uh, is it Juan Paulo? How do I say it? Sao Paulo? Sao Paulo. Sao, Rio Sao de Janeiro. Uh, uh, you've got Virginia. Like it, there's tons, tons of you've UFO. You've got different activity. Brazilian cities. Close yeah, by. it's it's like there's there's tons of different. <laughs> I'm just gonna list a bunch of different Brazilian cities, or no? Those are Keep those going. are cities that have had tons of cases of oh, like UFO okay. sightings oh, and fo photos. Just sounds like your name in cities in Brazil. So that's <laughs> yeah. I did, I did my research he's got a map it. up. He's got a map up, and he's just re reading yeah. down. You know, Brazil. It's got the population of <laughs> native language languages Portuguese. Native. It's uh, <laughs> native exports are <laughs> mostly lumber from you know. Rip it up the rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's been tons. Like uh, South America is a hotbed, and Brazil is is like one of the most like the countries with probably the most UFO UFO sightings, UFO incidents, famous UFO sightings and cases. So in South America, right in. yeah, yeah, because I mean it is huge. <laughs> it's like seventy percent of South America, <laughs> like decent sized country. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, you know, this, this case is definitely interesting. Number one, because it is more recent than most ones. It, uh, it took place in January of 1996. So, you know, you got one sweet day on top of the billboard 100 with Mariah Carey and boys to men, um, you know, LL cool J up there as well with Hey lover, um, breakfast at Tiffany's that uh, coming in at number five. And during this time you had these, a series of events that happen and then when all looked at together they seem to string together a very convincing narrative that there was a an a ufo crash and uh, there were one if not multiple bodies uh maybe had been alive and then d- deceased uh extraterrestrials had been recovered um and then there had been a subsequent cover up uh, involving uh united states uh United States officials and or um, military forces uh, coming in and and retrieving these bodies. Um, So this happened in January 20th uh, of that year. And you had this, uh, you had the kind of the first real thing that happens is that there is a number of of people who said that they were like, they were, uh, they saw like a a UFO. Like there's a, there's a couple of people who saw UFO. So one of them, is the uh, the local residents, uh, Oralina Augusta and her husband, uh, that, she, that she was woken at just after 1 a.m. in the morning, uh, in the early hours of that day. And then she, um, her and her husband were cattle farmers, and they heard this, their, their, their cattle were going crazy. They're making a bunch of noise, they're bellowing and all this stuff. Stuff that would Ooh. normally, <laughs> nor, but distressing, distressing cow noises. Right? So, yeah, there you go. That's, that's closer, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, when she looked out of her window, uh, and, you know, sh- what she described seeing was this, this object, this cigar sh- or submarine shaped object that seemed to have like a, like a glowing center and maybe some type of like a, like a clear outer casing of some type, but it was also trailing uh, some type of vapor or smoke that cause she could, that she could observe as it kind of sped through the sky over the, the farmland that they her and her husband had occupied at the time. Um, was the ship smoking itself? Like, was it, well, that's what they described Damaged. is like it, it something seemed to be trailing off of this craft this uh that they said they could uh, it was obviously glowing is what they described uh again the the husband i think describes it um pretty much uh, set on like a cigar shaped uh in the documentary we watched he just says like yeah it look it looked like something like a cigar like now, a clear cigar that, with like a glowing center and then this trail of vapor that was coming off the back. That's a pretty yeah. common shape now, right? Like I remember not too long ago, a couple of years ago, that we there was the witnesses of seeing the fucking cigar shape cra- coming crashing through uh, the solar system. Oh, Muamua. is that what that was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's it, it is like a staple. I would say like that. I wasn't sure you guys were just continuing to talk like cows there for a bit or something like that, <laughs> making shit up. But it's, no, yeah, the, it's, it's cigars. Orbs or like triangle shaped craft. Are, are, I would say the, but this one is like definitely an orb. And like the first thing, honestly, the the one thing that came to my mind from starting to watch this documentary is I was like, this to me is basically the intergalactic magic school bus. And Miss Frizzle just handed off the the driver's seat to Arnold Perlstein, and he's crashed this thing for a, another wacky adventure for the students. <laughs> That sounds accurate. That's right? Like, it funny. checks out when you, we yeah. start going through it more. You're going to be like, holy shit, this <laughs> is... That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Arnold would <laughs> fucking blow it, too. Exactly, <laughs> right? Like, he'd 100%. <laughs> she'd be like, hold the wheel here, Arnold. Like, oh, we're going down. Oh, I can't, but it's a frizzle. <laughs> yeah. oh, All right, well, I guess we're taking a l- closer look at the local inhabitants. <laughs> Uh, now, one of the more compelling stories about this encounter comes from three, uh, you know, women now, but back then they were uh, girls, uh, sisters named Lilian and Valkyria Fatima Silva and their friend Katia Andrade Xavier. And their ages were from 14 to 21, uh, you know, going in, in the order. Um, what they describe seeing is that they saw some type of creature as they were walking home through the kind of like down the street, like from where they lived, um, coming back, uh, you know, from, from wherever they were coming from. I think it was like, um, they were coming back from school or they had been picked up from school and 
they recall seeing this creature crouched down next to like a garden wall uh, in like kind of like a little bit like of a dug out kind of ditch. And then this creature they described having obviously – I mean, yeah, very similar to to that description is that it had a leathery brown skin from what they could observe. And they described really oily. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, really oily, something like that. And then it was a a, like a triangular shaped head with these large, uh, almost glowing red eyes. Um, And and they, they definitely hesitate to say, like, are they more inclined to describe this thing as being extraterrestrial because they describe the proportion of the limb in relation to its body what they said that it was too small uh, that they said like emaciated kind of limbs and these things like that and they said that when when they looked at it for the like the brief moment that they saw it um, you know in, in relation to the wall where it was crouched down they probably estimated its height at about two and a half feet uh, I thought initially they described it as like looked like a devil they're like this looked like a demon yeah it almost looked like it had protrusions on its head like horns and it's like this they they initially thought that this was some sort of demon well and this is in this is like a, one of those situations too where these girls are walking and they run into this thing that like we, almost like within eight feet eight to ten feet away like it's close and when you if you're watching moment of contact it kind of paints a better picture of the area with an overhead map of like where this all happened I'm like, this is like in a neighborhood. So this is like just kind of down a side street where there's a like almost like a vacant lot or a couple vacant lots in an alleyway. And these girls just are walking. They're like, ah, it's like right beside them. Buddy, right. I got it. We got a couple of those guys down the street shaking cups at you. <laughs> just this fucking same. All strung out with red eyes. <laughs> shaking cups. Uh, yeah. And one of the descriptions or, you know, the, um, uh, like they refer to it, like they kind of refer to it as this demonic appearance may come from the, uh, from the description that they gave later that uh, Katya along with the, with the sister's mother would make arrangements to come back uh, with a neighbor uh, because they were fearful of what they might find to that spot where they had witnessed this strange creature. And then when they got back there, um, even to this day, they still recall a very strong smell of what they described. Like, uh, some might they, they kind of say like ammonia but it was stronger and then they they usually re- say sulfur like it was something and that smelled like there's sulfur. a de- demon demons yeah. trail sulfur and an, inter- an interesting thing that like is that is a lot of people who seen this or interacted or kind of were in the air, vicinity of this thing all describe that kind of same smell uh one of the best descriptions of this smell was uh for me is like Whatever this smell was, it impregnated my nose. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, like it's, <laughs> it sticks awful. around. It lingers. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think uh, some other some other witnesses who described uh, encountering this smell, like you know, went out and like they said that they, they kind of tried to flush their nose out with like water and alcohol. Which I was like, I, why would you put alcohol in your nose? That sucks. Um, but yeah, and they said they just like couldn't get it out. Uh, this, Sometimes this, you get like we do that a lot with work, like you grab like Vicks vapor rub and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that nose. makes sense. Yeah, okay. Um, or like you. And uh, nebulize peppermint and all that type of shit. That's what. <laughs> well, the other that interesting worked. thing is um, the fact that they describe. They're like, you know what I mean? They they were very distinctive. Or like, it's, it wasn't like an animal. You know, like it was. In, it looked intelligent. Right? And it looked they scared. It like a, they said, it looked, looked scared. Looked scared, mm. hurt, but it was intelligent. Like they described. Like, what do you mean intelligent? Like intelligent, like you know, like an an ape or something like that. And they're like, no, like this thing was intelligent. Like they could tell, uh, like. I don't know. It's just weird. That like you it, they that could recognize that it was as it was as scared as to, as them, as they were of it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and so, f- shortly following this event, um, there, there's a number of witnesses who are interviewed in the days following the events that kind of led up to uh, you know local TV calling in, local TV stations covering the story. A lot of kind of. Uh, uh, general commotion going on surrounding these events and um th- they had people like a, there was an elderly woman and her granddaughter who said that they heard the young girls scream the ones who had uh initially encountered this this creature and 
although the the girls had already left, um, the, the grandmother and the young girl said that they watched this happen. So they would, and then they, they would claim that actually just shortly after the, the girls left, there was an actually a, a vehicle from the city fire brigade would show up and, and kind of, just take things from there. Um, and this is also seems to be confirmed by the report from a, a local bricklayer. His name is Enrique Jose de Souza, who claimed to have also seen a fire department vehicle at the location of this alleged sighting. And uh, like it, th- this, this goes into, um, this I feel like that's some dumb the... shit firefighters would do. No offense to firefighters, <laughs> but like if their nine one one call get in, I feel like they'd be dispatched with some tarps and shit. You know what well, I mean? Well, that's like, what like, they, they, what I read, they caught it with a fucking big net. I'm like, ah. <laughs> you imagine this thing, like it's uber intelligent cable of interstellar travel gets to earth and then you got fucking wily e. coyote and a bunch of other dumbasses and their fucking helmets <laughs> with fucking nets trying to catch you like what are they fucking like no i need help dickhead like what are you fucking doing man? <laughs> crashed <laughs> yeah like fuck uh so once once you get to the uh reports of there being you know fire fire brigades being dispatched to these locations now you get into the um the idea that there was a military response to these creatures uh that may or may not have originated from that craft uh that was originally observed by orlina augusta and uh, a few other witnesses uh saying that they had seen something some type of ufo craft some people said they saw a glowing orb but some people reported seeing something come down uh in the air the general area of where these these events took place yeah there was um, a, a they they go they, they go as a prominent family that wants to remain unnamed supposedly like a there's a doctor in the family and they don't want to sell you their fucking good name with you know, talks of extraterrestrials, but supposedly right around the same time that Fatima and the other girls had their encounter, they saw that glowing red orb and it was circling the area for about 15 minutes. And it looked like it was like searching for something, which would make sense. Maybe it's coming to like retrieve this injured fucking all these little guys that are running around Virginia. That's run, it's running some type of search pattern, trying to find them. Yeah. yeah trying to rescue crew or some shit. Right. Uh, so when you have the, the, the stories coming out and the reports of there being some type of military or police response, one of the, uh, one of the anecdotes that comes out is there's a story about two officers who were described in reports as being plain clothed agents, uh, would actually capture one of these creatures. And so one of the reports comes out that these, <laughs> Like uh, Andrew just mentioned a little bit before, um, they were not equipped or seemed to not be equipped with any types of tools or anything for restraint or capture of any type. They weren't like animal control. Uh, you know, they didn't have the little the rope poles or anything like that. And they pretty much just like took a jacket or like a blanket and just threw it over this creature and well, put yeah, it in the they, back of their car. They called animal control and they're like, it's an animal. They're like, no, it, it's some sort of creature. They're like, hey, listen, until you verify that's an animal, we're not coming. Boy, we're busy enough. Yeah. Think about the <laughs> shit they got to deal with down there. <laughs> um, and so uh, going on from that, it, it said that um, from investigations by local researchers, uh, they said that these agents had apparently driven this creature to a small local clinic and then uh, probably thinking that perhaps it was like it, it was a hurt animal <laughs> or that is uh, perhaps like something like a a child or something that's yeah, in, some, in distress somebody with fucking progeria <laughs> what's progeria uh, look it up what? it'll looks just like this guy okay uh, not how do i spell it of progeria 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 oh oh no yeah how do you, genetic how do you spell disorder it? oh that's benjamin button progeria. or whatever yeah, it's, it's it's pro and then G E R I A. Extremely rare progressive genetic disorder that causes children to age rapidly. Yes. So the head, um, oh, head gets so big, crazy. Uh, so they thought maybe it was something like that. It could have been that situation, but the the apparently the doctor would refuse them access uh, to the premises and then pretty much urge them to take this. You know this creature, this, this, this creature. Thing too. <laughs> this, uh, can they? Can you not talk with Progeria? Couldn't you be like, I'm, I'm a human. Stop. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you don't think they would have seen this this guy around town? Like he's so he'd be, he would have been a unique, yeah, unique. You would have been like, you would have been like, oh, that's the Progeria boy. Well, yeah, right? but maybe like, he, no maybe he every, suffered from another just, affliction. Maybe he. You're was, telling me this is a daily deaf. occurrence for he's this guy mute. when he goes outside? They just trap him with nets every time. You never know. <laughs> Um, he just kids. keeps changing cities because he, he's sick. <laughs> um, one of these, one of these described plainclothes agents uh, apparently would be identified as one Marco Shereze, and it's said that Marco actually handled this creature with his bare hands during the per- apprehension, like he had put the hands on this, uh, you know, alleged just, extraterrestrial. Just scooped him up, just like ran up and just like, yeah, gotcha. And then within days, well, he would become... obviously these things hurt, right? Like right. they're they're trying to help, so they obviously had to pick it up and put it in the car. The thing would have fled if it could, you'd mm-hmm. imagine, right? So it's in probably rough shape. So that's it's been ejected four hundred feet from the crashed craft. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> And then it was reported by his family that, you know, days later he became extremely ill and had to be hospitalized. And then pretty much like uh, was reporting all kinds of things like, a, you know, loss, loss of the use of all his limbs, um, you know, he, rapid deterioration of all his Whatever, physical. It's, it's like a like a neurodegenerative fucking bacteria or something like that's Yeah, they, they called it an infection, but it could. And they just said he he died pretty quickly right. <laughs> following uh, the interaction. Yeah, ultimately he would die on February fifteenth of uh, you know that year. So <laughs> like just the very from, next month, just from coming in contact with this thing, like phys- like from touching it, because well, the other guy was fine, I, right? I, I, I think they. I think like the from what I remember reading is that they listed it as like he died from general infection, but like everything shut down. They're just like yeah, generally everything was infected. All right, so like full, full body septic. infection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, like the craziest part is, is that like they're like, "All right, he's dead." Instantly in a coffin, instantly sealed. They're like, "And his funeral's uh, right now." <laughs> he's gone. Actually, we've. Well, so for, I him. bet you he's not even in the coffin. They probably hell no. Got, they like burned. They him. torched him. Yeah. Oh, well, are you worried about some that? new fucking disease? Torch him, right? No questions asked. That was COVID fucking ninety six. <laughs> okay, got rid of it. <laughs> Fuck. Mm. Uh, yeah, and so the um, the family to this day, uh, especially his sister, are still involved with efforts trying to uh, find out exactly what happened because they they still. Um, they're still determined to, to find out the, the true cause of his death. They feel like that the explanation that they were offered was insufficient as to why. Um, and what he died. did they, what did they offer though? Like what did, like do they, so the family knows for sure that he came in contact with this being and that's what led to his death. Well, well I don't think they know for sure it, but the, because that's the story going around and then them not knowing exactly like his sudden deterioration and death. And then they're like, Okay, well, we're hearing this. Like, is this? Is, does this have anything to do with his death? And they're like, no. So they like they we're obviously like, they would have done an autopsy on this guy. If you have like a young, healthy dude that just ra- like just rapidly deteriorated, died, you'd want to know what the fuck happened to him. Yeah, but if he touched a fucking alien and then rapidly died, do you think they're keeping his body around to do an autopsy? Well, th- but that's what I'm wondering. Like, what like the fam- What did the explanation did they give to this family though? Did they just hey, you know what, you know, it's the way she goes. <laughs> I think that's Fucking pretty much here. Cool. You're not. <laughs> uh, yeah. The the only I think they, they had a, <laughs> there's some allegations of that think there was actually altering of the official records that show that Cherezi actually wasn't on duty that night. Um, and then the they have the documents of Cherezi, like his medical records of of when he died, because those are at least in the documentary, it shows that the sister has those. Um, and um, I think it was like Brayden said, like he died of some type of secondary or, or infection or some type. I heard he got an infection from a surgical site. Like he had some type of cyst removed from his arm. And, but that's kind of what they want you to know. And right. What got, they attributed that surgical to site got infected and then he got sepsis. Now, and, and, died, and like but. on the, on the fact that he wasn't on duty, like we know he was in plain clothes and we know he was driving an unmarked car. So like, 
we do also know that the military was kind of doing sweeps and setting up a little bit of roadblocks. So if this was like an all hands on decks situation, like maybe they just didn't have the resources for everyone to come in and take units out. And they're just like, yeah, jump in a car. This is what we need you to do. This is what you're looking for. Right. Well, like, maybe, it, what if Cereze or whatever, you know, maybe he thought this was like, he's like, listen, I, I, I fuck it. I've seen ET. This is my moment. <laughs> I'm going to phone this motherfucker home. Like he's excited. They're going to, you know, get this guy. I'm going to put him in a basket and fly him over the moon. Right. Like I was going to save this guy. They touch fingers and he dies. <laughs> he dies. <laughs> Instantly irradiated. His body just shut down. That makes sense. He's like, I feel all tinkly. Well, this didn't happen. To Elliot. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, now with these things, these events surrounding, uh, you know, the encounter, the what has now become like the Varginha incident. Um, you had everybody's favorite, um, is he a podiatrist, Doctor Roger Lear, uh, the late Doctor Roger Lear? Now, um, God damn, I I know I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it again whenever he comes up. The motherfucker had the worst facial hair. <laughs> Like the worst facial hair. We're talking hair. about Dr. Roger Lear, the guy, the alien implant guy? Yeah, the alien implant doctor. Yeah. We did that. Guy. We didn't do We do a case file on him like early Long, long. time ago. Yeah. Early. Um, but yeah, it, he he actually went down there and investigated in the, on the case in like the early 2000s. Like he went down there, which which I thought was interesting, at least for in, in the documentary. This is one of the the few interesting parts that I found was like that they had actual footage from that that uh, from that visit, um, which I hadn't seen. Uh, I think when we when we did the original. Um, we did the original uh, confidential on this case. Like I had seen those, those tapes of him uh, interviewing um, some witnesses that he had gotten contact with um, uh, through, I think like he had a, uh, he had a AJ, AJ Javert, who is the editor and director of the Brazilian UFO magazine uh, and the uh, Brazilian UFO magazine. And then the Brazilian center for flying Sa saucer research, which I feel like, yeah, if you're, if you publish the magazine, yeah, you would, have to be the, the head of the Brazilian flying saucer research. I feel like it's just him. Like his office is both. <laughs> <laughs> publishing offices of Brazilian UFO magazine and Brazilian Center for Flying Saucer Research. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, so, uh, and he had claimed to be in contact with a um, uh, with a couple of nurses and other personnel from the hospital, the regional general hospital, um, where one of these one of these or or the singular maybe one uh of these extraterrestrial bodies had been taken and he had accounts from them and and also like interviews with the, with these people who were having their apparently had been um intimidated by the military after doing things like x-rays and kind of like a you know pre um uh kind of just like real real um what's it called when you do like a little pre exam on this thing. They took some x rays and just kind of like literally um <laughs> what's the word? What is uh, it physical? General physical? Like a, a physical? like a, yeah, kinda of like that. They were just kinda of like kinda of poking at it really and just a like cupped his, cupped his balls, <laughs> made him yeah. cough. Yeah. <laughs> Just um, x-rays blood work supposedly they like they the guys the ones that did the x-rays and shit too, they didn't even take them out of the body bag. They did yeah. through the bag, which kind of leads me to the same. Like you think about, it, like obviously maybe they don't want to touch this guy. They don't want to open it up because they don't know what they're going to release because the fucking cop just died from coming in contact with it. Right? right. It'd be a. It would go right to the for forefront of your mind. You're like, this guy died from yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I mean, he wasn't, him in. He wasn't him in. dying. He wasn't dying right away. Like they didn't. Yeah, well, his that body's anymore. shutting down. He's. Well, that was like that was days later. That was days though. later, but was, honestly, yeah, though, it's like if you're if they're bringing this thing in, I could see that like it's all oily and stuff. Like it smells bad. Like you would have, I imagine, some smarter people there being like, "Don't touch it." It's better. Yeah, if you can smell it, that, that means it's getting in your body. So just yeah. let's lock it in. Just in leave case. it. Leave leave it in the bag. <laughs> if we away. can do our job through the bag. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy so, how x-rays work <laughs> yeah no it li they're literally just like all right like how do you want to x-ray this thing well they're like well just it stinks really bad so leave it in the bag you don't want yeah. to slap it down on it's there it's fucking gross <laughs> <laughs> and i it is from from this 
uh, from this account is also corroborated by one interview in the documentary with a, uh, a former, a for, or like a former member of the Brazilian military who had re- been in response at that time, who had been dispatched with the original, like kind of convoy that I guess had been sent out from the local military base, the ESA base, ESA, um, and they had all gone out there and he, he talked about how they they didn't tell them like why they were going out there, why they were being posted out there, what they were doing, why they were going to this hospital. And he said that he actually ended up getting posted outside the room of this thing. Um and like he said that he saw this thing in a box. Like it was either like the bag was inside the box or something, but it had like a there was something strange about it because he realized that when he looked, you know, got caught a glance into the room where the doctors and the uh, military officers were talking. Um, he saw like the foot or an appendage uh, from the creature actually sticking outside of the Whoa. container that they had it in. And he describes it as being like, yeah, it's like two toes, like, you know, having your feet in the, the Vulcan. Uh, like a V? Yeah, like a Ninja Turtle. Yeah, like a Vulcan salute. Yeah. Um, yeah, like a Ninja Turtle. And, um, you know, and he's like, he said that he was visibly disturbed by that at the time because he's like, I have no idea what I'm looking at, and was actually kind of like relieved of his post um, by another, uh, by his sergeant or something, that being like, go leave right now. Yeah, well, he's like, he just <laughs> right away, he's like, this, this, whatever that thing is, is not human. Uh, I could tell by the s- smell first. <laughs> And it's like, obviously, like when it's like, oh, and then it was put in a box. I imagine that this thing smelled so bad by all accounts, terribly, that if you had this thing in an enclosed room, like if you started smelling through the bag, you're like, okay, hey, get something else like, <laughs> you need to put get another bag. Yeah, get another bag. No, you've got a box. <laughs> put it in the box. Like, God damn. Like, apparently this thing like shut down rooms, of the hospital for a couple days after where they were just like that stank yeah, lingered. It, it stank. Yeah, they had to shut down not like a whole room, wing, but yeah, a couple floors of that <laughs> hospital. They were saying that they had to shut down because of the, the stench. Like it was just yeah. lingering uh, there in the thing and they just couldn't get rid of it for days. Um, which is like something like I remember something similar, probably like in high school where it's like, you know, you bring out the fetal pigs and you're like for dissection class or whatever. And it was like mm. it's formaldehyde all day. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like formaldehyde all day. But yeah, I, um, like I've, I've been to like a corpse that had been decomposing for about a, the, the estimated time, about a week and a half. And like it was like you could smell it coming out of the elevators, walking down the hallway. And then when we opened the door, it was one of those things where you did like one of those quick and it like you couldn't get the smell out of your nostril for fucking three days like i literally everything stomach was turned couldn't eat you just felt oh it's, it's just some meat man. that went bad <laughs> it's fucking awful um so there are some other there are some other stories that come out of that uh you know the encounters that they had at these hospitals and it's there are depending on Depending on which account you follow, there are a couple that either put it at uh, this one hospital, like the general hospital, or another one called Humanitas Hospital, um, where another body may have been examined, and that involves some greenish gas, apparently, um, come issuing from the body uh, or the creature itself. Um, some accounts, some accounts that you come across about this case have the one of the creatures or the same creature being alive at the time um and like having uh not so having like a serious injury uh there, there's talk about like maybe it had like it, one of its limbs seemed to be broken like a femur like where our femur oh. would be like it had like yeah. a femur bone uh fracture or break and they were trying to figure out like what was wrong with it but um I think I remember in, in one of the um, during our research, like there was a doctor that talked about like there was some type of report of like uh, claims of like psychic contact that this psychic communication of some sort that went on between them and the the uh, the creature itself. Or something. It, you had all that's hands what, on deck. <laughs> well, but that's what makes me think like with, especially with these two cops, these two plainclothes cops, they're like right away. We got to get like this thing must have been able to communicate with them being like, I'm injured. I need to go to the hospital. Now. Well, OK, well, it, like, Telepathic. Like, let's look yeah. at. But so let's look like, at the, a previous run in, like with those girls. Those girls said that, like, they looked at this thing and, and they, they knew weren't. It was intelligent. They knew it was intelligent and they knew it was scared of them, right? So, like, let's say, let's just extrapolate that to that officer. He sees this thing, it has a look of intelligence and it looks injured, right? And it looks like it's not going to, like, it's scared. Yeah, but so at he the same time, too, though, like, the, you don't know what the fuck that thing is, man. 
Yeah, I definitely no like. Clue. I would say I would. I am probably hard pressed to go anywhere near it. Oh, you're, yeah, you're you're the other way for sure. There's no way. I don't know if I'm the other way. I might just watch. I'm not, I'm not touching but it. But 90% of the population are the same way. We get fucking 1,000 911 calls a day because people are sleeping on the sidewalk and nobody wants to go in there and check on them and see if they're okay or if they need an ambulance. <laughs> they just call 911. And sometimes we don't get to those people for hours and sometimes they're not okay. Like, you know, like it's people don't go and check and it's. Yeah, but scared. they don't look like they have pejoria, right? Progeria. 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 <laughs> uh, it, so I think I think this thing conveyed, and then I think I think in the moment, this guy. What, what was his name, name again, Dan? Which one? The officer who touched him. Sure is He seeing this thing hurt, probably instantly recognizes it as extraterrestrial. It's like a it's like a first contact thing. He's like, I'll help you. Right, like it's it's like to me, it, everything it sounds like a, an honorable thing he tried to do, and he was repaid with uh, what he got pain for and it. misery. Look what he got for it? Uh, yeah, so um, it, that's most of the. I mean, that's the case really there. And then after after this, it's it's reported that these bodies were per- perhaps um, either. There's kind of two things, I think. There's one that they were taken to the the university, like the local university, and they were, like, wheeled out through there, and they were examined by doctors, like university professors and doctors down there. And then there's other accounts that these bodies were spirited away by, um, um, like – Americans, um, like uh, plain clothes, civilian, seem to be civilians, and they were taken to a like an airfield uh, the, or the local airport uh, where there were some claims, uh, you know, at least one, I think, airport, like, and one of the uh, air traffic controllers said that uh, in an interview in the, the documentary uh, by James Fox was said that there was or he, they were there um you know they were on shift and they said that they remember like US Air Force uh, a plane at least like landing there um and kind of asked them like why well how did you know it was Air Force because well it landed without permission and then it just, it just landed they just they seemed to have uh, dispatched like some uh, vehicles from that and then took how off long, like, just to how long there. after would you say like, that that night, but, like it was already there, so they are tracked. Whatever this was, if the, if it was the Americans, yeah, within short they're, order, they're of they're, that tra- they're tracking yeah. it already. They know where it's going. They know where it's either it's crashing or where it's going to land, and they're or, already on the way. Or like we, or like we've said in like in the past that like after Roswell and stuff, they have just a like a playbook of like exactly what to do to scoop these things out in and out and get get rid of it so it's like the second they've tracked this in the airspace and they know it goes down they've already dispatched crews well, and they're like it's a, it's cover up time and it's best case scenario too right because it's brazil like they don't at this point in time the, the government's in fucking shambles in the 90s in brazil they don't have the infrastructure to deal with any of this type of shit with the with the craft with the aliens and like they brought it to a local fucking hospital they tried calling the vet first they didn't pick up like <laughs> That's a lie, but you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, they don't, they don't have the tools to deal with this. Right. So it's perfect for the States to be able to take a short trip down South. Hey, bingo, bingo, bongo. This is ours. See you later. Bye. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are, we are got we have a few of these on ice already. We'd like another, a couple more. Uh, why not add it to our collection? Complete the set. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> not even in the, not even in the ice. It wasn't when we did the, they're suspended in like the pink jelly. Not even ice. Even better. And like the hang and hangar eighteen. Where they took the aliens. Yeah. Oh. All right, just before we continue with the case, we gotta take a short beer break. We're gonna be right back. Fuck.
We're back. One thing I was thinking is that um, the body of why I Shereze? Yeah. Um, you know, like we're the story. So it goes like the, we know the family's pissed for whatever reason, whatever happened to him. They're they're pissed off. They don't really have answers to his death. They've been searching ever since 96. Right. It says the body was sealed up right away. My, but one of the things I would love to know is if they actually saw the body. Right. Like because that that piqued my curiosity, like because with, you know, the states and government officials rolling in. I, I kind of think I'm like, you know, if if they're picking up these aliens or coming, you would think that they would be like interested in collecting the one guy who physically touched it and is having all these health problems <laughs> yeah. associated with it because you would want to study what effects exactly it had on the human body. So I, I want like I love I would love to know if they saw the body in the casket or if the casket was sealed he's not even in the casket he's not even in the casket he's exactly. been incinerated yeah, he's right not in there right no, I, he hasn't been incinerated. No, I, probably I think still he's, he's in I, jelly too i think he's in he's jelly like weapon too. x floating in one of them fucking right, tanks. Right, right. they're like yeah oh yeah they know right. they've he's got a prawn head now and they've yeah. got him shooting at little aliens <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah in area 51 <laughs> Use an alien tech, but that was my question. I was like, you know, I would love to know that. It, ne it never touches like the, everything we know about this case and stuff from the documentary and, and previous readings. And there's older documentaries on this case is that like the family's just still searching for answers. But that's one answer that I would love to know is did they at least see the body at the funeral? Like, was the body in the casket? Yeah, I think I think they mainly because because it happened like a couple weeks after the initial encounter, um, they did like observe his deterioration before he was like I, fully I have, hospitalized. I have no, I no um, doubt about that. I have no doubt that he was seen in the hospital. What I want to know is, did they physically see his body in the casket? Because like I know he was seen while he was getting sick and and the quick deterioration, but I, my brain just goes to right away. It was like. You would want, I feel like you would want that. Like if I was in charge of like a collection team and they're like, Hey, we got reports of this one, like this one uh, military official who, who grabbed it and he's actually really sick now. I'd be like, I want him. Right. Like, he, yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, I'm sure they could, but they shouldn't be able just to take somebody's body. <laughs> shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't be able to, that should not be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the, it, recently that this, uh, this case came back into the spotlight, like I've known about Virginia for like a while. Like we said, we covered it way back. It, it's um, been on the list ago. for even longer than that. Yeah. It's, it's been way back there. Cause I know I've come across it cause it's, it's it, like, it's all that town is known for. They literally, they literally have like a flying saucer monument to the entire thing and it's part of their identity which is part of the problem i think and, but and brazil has other cases like we said before like there's colaris so we've talked about colaris before um you know uh, sao paulo and other ones they have tons of ufo uh encounters because i mean it is a huge country so of course they would have um uh those things so yeah they light it up at night and these things so it is yeah it yeah, is cool like like andrew said it is part of their identity as a town it's like a kind of tourist pole um so with that being said, you had another kind of the documentary that came out last year, Moment of Contact by director James Fox, director of the Phenomenon. Um, and they went in and they did their own investigation, which they say is still ongoing uh, even after after this one. Um, big and, things to come. Stand by. <laughs> big things to come. Yeah, for the sequel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, so, yeah, we were lucky enough to, to watch the uh the the documentary of the, that stuff you know hoping to glean a little bit of extra information maybe there's some new stuff that we missed uh while we were watching it um i can say that the, the documentary um is interesting in the fact to me is that they got peter coyote to narrate it and if people who are familiar with uh great documentaries like the the vietnam war one by ken burns and a number of other ones by him peter coyote is like his go-to man for that and he does all those narrations like as soon as you hear that voice and if you watch doctor you'll be like oh shit it's that guy yeah. like shit's real like and only uh, for me it was like oh this lends a little bit of heft to it because like why would peter coyote go in here then i realized that peter coyote works he does a lot of shit <laughs> um it's, and like it, the thing is too it's like this is a if you've never heard of this case and you stumbled on this interesting well well done documentary but it's like there is uh, there is better 
like because everyone who's telling us like oh my god it it talks to eyewitnesses yes it does now eyewitnesses now there's other documentaries that were produced that had all the clips of the interviews from the people that are in this one weeks after this happened yeah there was a young uh, we we watched the one there was a discovery channel there's like a discovery yes. channel special like years ago and they went in and they they interviewed the same girls the the girls who had the initial encounter uh, valkyria and fatima and all them uh er, er, and i mean they pretty much tell the same story in the in the documentary and this one so their story doesn't change uh which is you know that's good um something they usually look out for for these kinds of things but their story doesn't really change about what they saw um but yeah, James Fox goes down there with his whole crew and he's in on it, you know, hunting down leads for his uh, documentary. You know, he's got some interviews and stuff lined up. Um, <laughs> I was like, I do. I do want to know where they got their <laughs> like <laughs> some of the stuff is kind of interesting <laughs> where he like pulls out. And he's like, oh, this is our field translator. And I don't even I don't know if they put her name or, or something like that. But it's like it's like, did you pull her off of like Instagram? Did you like. <laughs> Like where she's like blonde, like big hey, listen, fake eyelashes, listen, and like okay. you need some eye candy in a UFO documentary, right? <laughs> Especially when you know That's halfway they spend through most of the budget on I mean. yeah. <laughs> that and Peter Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Peter Coyote. And so, and so you know the best way once you get down there, right? You're like, okay, well, we got to find people who know. Um, uh, who know about the case and, you know, who are willing to be interviewed about it. So, you know, the best way to do that, you know, I guess, according to this documentary and, and James Fox is to have Sharpie written signs and hold them up on a street corner that say, if you know anything about the <laughs> Virginia UFO incident, please come talk to us. Well, you know what though? You know what though? That <laughs> it, it, it isn't like, I, again, probably not the, the best way but it is an interesting way because like you a lot of the players you know right and it's like you know maybe you get one or two people like i heard about this and give you some like a little piece of information you maybe didn't know just through what they've heard right maybe it's more of a thing of like you're just trying to get people to uh you know come and interact and and maybe they have a piece of a rumor that's never been shown so like as weird as that is i was like you know what i don't quite fault them for that because like if i guarantee you there's like if I went and sat on the corner here in Campbell River and was like, have you seen Bigfoot? Someone would come and talk to me and be like, I've seen him. Yep. And that would be right? a completely reliable and easily corro- easily corroborated story. Well, here's the um, thing. It might be. You don't know because he <laughs> until he comes and tells you, right? uh yeah and and then you can vet you can vet those stories you know at your leisure i suppose you would get a lot and then you know you could go through and vet them as which i'm sure they did like i'm yeah. sure they did in the documentary we missed all we, that that just wasn't shown in because that would probably be really boring the boring part um <laughs> um also interesting that uh the the virginia uh you know ufo incident community is very small because apparently the mayor's the mayor who they get to talk to um, the current mayor of the, um, of Virginia area, um, his nephew dated one of the girls who is involved in the case. I don't think he named which one, <laughs> but he said that his nephew dated one of those girls. And, and that's the problem with the fact like that. They, <laughs> this is their identity. They got a fucking monument to it. Everybody that lives there wants to be a part of that story somehow. You know what I mean? Like that's like, that's where I see the problem with this. You know, like they want this story to be a thing. It's their fucking, it's the reason why they're getting tourism. And so, I, I don't know. It just, I was, I was surprised how easily and how appro- like approachable the, the mayor was to, to talking about it. Like he was like very much, I mean, it was very, well, well listen, like, they, like they asked him like, do you believe this happened? And then he said, you know, yes, these things are described as happening. And, you know, absolutely. It, it I probably, believe it happened. Yeah, Bring your he, friends. He, yeah. He, Buy a shirt, get a he, fucking keychain. He blows <laughs> it up in the, in the <laughs> documentary as if like, I can't believe I talked to an elected government official. You know, if you go to fucking, what's the town in, there's a town in Alberta. It's got like the weird world's largest beaver sculpture. I guarantee you, you can go <laughs> talk to the mayor about the, the beaver sculpture and he will be like, Oh Yes. 
Our beaver I'm fi- sculpture? I- I'm filming a documentary about the beaver sculpture. He's going to let you like, in. Yes. That's yeah, that's what good. our town's all about. There's a there's a, another town in hey, buddy, UF, in Alberta that, that, that has I'm, a IMDb IMDb page. Yeah. I, anything. UFO landing can get Peter Coyote to an area. Yeah. Outside Edmonton, right? And I guarantee you the mayor of that city, he'd be like, hey, we're here. We'd like to talk to about the UFO landing pad. He's like, sure. It's a staple in our fucking little butt fuck community. No problem. Right? Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, one of the one of the largest. So, uh, you know, further into the documentary, you have a a pretty a pretty decent section dedicated to a, a, a Mr. Carlos <laughs> de Souza. Now, Carlos de Souza is reported to have My been favorite. one one of the people <laughs> who had a, a, a very he had a very descriptive encounter with the craft like he had a very just a description and he says that he well not saw only that Dan, sorry sorry to interject not only that but he was also inner he's one of the people interviewed on other documentaries almost right immediately after like right. with news and stuff like he's one of the people that's like i seen it like right. it was how it crashed like yeah. so it's like it's you're just seeing him now you know 20 years later 26 years later um yeah so he's one of the persons is associated earlier um like he he's on there's footage of him like giving an interview to a news crew uh or a documentary about what he saw and that he said that he saw the the craft actually crash like he saw the where it crashed and like where it came apart um as he was driving home uh those early or no he was driving to go visit some friends i think it was what he said um in that early morning and um you know at night or 1 a.m or whenever it was uh to to, and saw this thing like crash into a field uh like right off the road and he decided to go look you know on the um on the pretense well he said that you know perhaps it was so you know he thought it was like a a plane or something i think oh no he was flying to he was going to meet some friends to fly ultralights which i would i didn't know that i didn't know that was a thing i didn't know that was a thing like you just meet up and i guess you know whatever i guess flying kites but they're planes and they could still crash but yeah and like you get in the plane like yeah okay um neat and so you know maybe he thought something had happened or whatever but he goes over there and he said that you know um uh, that there was you know a military presence like shortly after he reached there like there was flaming wreckage um he said that he actually touched um some of the material uh that came off the craft or that was like spread out and like you know flaming i guess flaming pockets of debris that were cover this little field uh he said that he was able to fold it and it acted very similar in the fashion that you have uh you know some descriptions from the roswell crash of yeah, the, like memory, memory metal. yeah like memory yeah. metal and he would, said it floated too. Like when he went to put it down, it floated. Mm. Well, and he said he, he, he like fold, he like crumbled it up. Like it right. just, it just fell apart, like almost folded. It was totally um, like you could put it in any Malleable. kind of shape, malleable. And then he let it go and it just boom, like whoop, right back so, to the original. That's very of, similar to the, to the Roswell foil. Right. We just okay. fucking said everything you just said. We just repeated. <laughs> right. But what the point I wanted to move on to was, is that. Were you doing that, were you doing that to be an asshole, Zal? Yeah, That's a little hilarious. bit. Yeah. But do you this, realize that, Brayden, that you just repeated everything Dan said? Yeah. <laughs> you must have just. I did, out but for I. a second? I oh, did. Okay. I was, when I was thinking this next point, I wanted to say. <laughs> Uh, is that uh, so? It was really like the metal from Roswell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, it, to me, I was like, man, maybe this is some of the shit that Tom DeLong has, right? DeLong's yeah, got Tom a box in his and, basement, um, and his buddy. But, hey, listen, uh, whatever he's face? got, I fully endorse it because he's back with Bob Bigelow. Really Bob Bigelow's got some too, probably. They're locked up that in his hangar good. in Las Vegas. Well, just Don't, it feels like this stuff would be easier to get from like a third world country where you're just like. All right, like yeah, all right, we go scoop this stuff up, or like you know, someone has it, they're selling it with uh, you know two pickle babies in a diet Pepsi, yeah. right? Um, you know, aside from all that, uh, it, the, Carlos de Souza's discovery number one re- good price for <laughs> reusable tin foil, buddy. Huh? Yeah. You want a reusable tin foil, right? Here. Any pot, any pan, <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever you need, buddy. The um, the rediscovery of the place because when they drive out there initially, like. Carlos de Souza can't remember exactly where it it's been 26 years. So he hasn't really, apparently like he hasn't really done any interviews with people since the, the first ones that he did uh, back in like 1996. Um, and then they, until now, and then they took him out there, uh, James Fox and his crew, like they drove out there to the area where uh, Carlos said that this thing had crashed um, and they were driving around for 
who knows how long um a while um and he couldn't really he couldn't really there it was and then he yeah. just kind of sees a spot and he says you know he gets very emotional he gets very excited and no no it. like we're talking fucking like academy award winning fucking emotions yeah. like this guy he drops like, to oh, his serious. knees the tears oh, yeah. are pouring out he's like breathing heavy like it, they sprint over there and hey, hey. i mean carlos is not exactly in his prime like he sprints over there he's uh you know pretty excited to find this like, thing like listen if this guy's fucking if this is a grift that's a fuck, like that guy deserves the, he should be in movies <laughs> that was impressive. the other thing with me is i'm like when i watched that i like i kind of felt i just felt i was like if you have this kind of emotional like reaction from going to the site, two things went through my head. I was like, one, I feel like you would have been compelled to visit it more often. And two, you would have known exactly where the fuck it is because you would have done just that. Like well, 26 years 20, ago. Yeah, that's a long time. You, you, you uh, no, live no, in the area. Of not to thing. mention that's a fucking terrifying thing. I wouldn't want to go back. Fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'd go back to like, drive and just pee. We're gonna take you back to the place yeah, where your fucking was, uncle touched you. I don't want to go there. According to like, Carlos, like awful. in the when when he got there, like after the time he, he had to uh, interact with the metal and like put it down, like he was um within minutes, like he said that military, like military cars and trucks showed up and you know had guys like trooping out and then a couple of them like you know were pointing their weapons at him and said basically like fuck off, like get out of here. Yeah, um, and he you. probably ran his ass back too, yeah. like he frantically, like I gotta get the fuck out of here before I get shot. <laughs> This is the Brazilian fucking military. I could disappear in a second and no one would give a shit and no one would know. Yeah. <laughs> like they just leave you in that field. Literally. Like fucking you already got a big crater in the ground from a fucking spaceship crash. Yeah, just throw just throw toss you in it. Yeah. Fucking bury him next to the fucking oily guy with progeria. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's um. So yeah, like uh, aside from you know, past the Carlos de Souza stuff, which is pretty early in the documentary, um, you have some other interviews that they do because this is probably one of the things um that a lot of people suggested the documentary first because it has a lot of interviews with people who were who claim to have been uh, involved um in the thing. So you have the, the girls; they interview the girls again uh, about their story. They talk about it. Um, I think they interview a, a couple other women who said that they were around uh, during that area. Um, they also go to a local TV station that was apparently like had covered some of this, and um, I think they talked to one uh, Nye. Nadia, like as the guy's name, and uh, talked about how they had tried to kind of get past like a convoy, like they, there was like a roadblock set up by military, like during around this time, and while they, they were, were looking like sweeping, looking for these things. Yeah, and he was saying like, "Can we go past?" And the military said, "No, like you can't go." They said, "Why not?" And said, "No, you just can't." Like, no, go away. Um, and didn't he say <laughs> they pointed the guns at him too? And he's like, "Yeah, I can. I'm free citizen." And they're like, "Oh yeah." I, I'm not you sure. sure yeah, they sure about that. I don't know if they said like they threatened him directly with guns, but yeah, I just thought it was funny when uh, James Fox was like, "Oh, so they have no free press here in Brazil?" And I'm like, "Well, that's kind of a loaded question." If they say no or yes, like that's <laughs> like, um, you know, it's just like I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, like so. There's that thing. That there's, there's some. There, so th- that's why they get on the thing where it's like, okay, so now it, they, they talk. They start talking about this this cover up uh, going on, and and then they they talk about the um the Roger Lear investigation, which was cool. Like I said, there was really cool footage of seeing Roger Lear, um, in, interviewing uh, Valeria uh, Shereze, You know, uh, the the Shereze, the the sister of the the officer who died um and then they also have like the clips at least clips of like when they went to go interview the fire brigade that had uh, said that they apprehended one of the creatures or something like that and yeah, they showed like, like we wore gloves we're fine yeah <laughs> or they had they had one of the uh, what do they call the like man catcher sticks like the little like whatever the heck they're called yeah yeah that, right that's right they showed yeah, it like, pole. <laughs> yeah they had one of those and like the uh like i and they were like they were like joking around about like what they were doing like what they did and i was like but you guys look caught an alien like wouldn't you be like <laughs> well it's what? funny he didn't like it he didn't elaborate on, like he didn't ask them more but like then what happened when you sh- caught this thing he just had, like showed them showing them like pulling the string tight and like the one guy's like ah yeah and ah. they're just like yeah we talked to the fire brigade that that had allegedly captured one of the creatures or something like that and that was but like who's it. who's on the fire <laughs> like who like yeah, 26 no names. years later is like who would be left from that original a lot of group? these a lot of uh countries like that actually have like volunteer fire brigades so <laughs> it could be kind of hard to track everybody down 
Yeah, that's what I, that was my kind of thought too. Well, they were able to to track down apparently one of the former military officers that was kind of like in charge of things. One Eric Lopes. Yeah, he's he's the person who was apparently with uh, fuck every single time. What's his name? Sure. Shereze. Shereze. Yeah. Uh Like driving with him, his partner yeah. in this whole thing. Yeah, it was apparently he's his office. never talked to anyone, ever. No. He's no. never given a statement. He's never mm. talked about Shereze's death. So this is a huge exclusive to get him to talk. And uh, so they managed to track him down. Uh, this because I think Shereze is like, there weren't police. They were like, they were military police. Like they were is actually what they were. And um, like... They track this guy down and they drive down at kind of out of the city, uh, down some dirt back roads into a uh, area, which is just like a, a small, pretty sm- sad. Looking and they're rolling heavy. Building. They're rolling heavy. Like they got a whole crew with them. <laughs> Cameras, I think multiple people, multiple vehicles. They had like, like an aid. They had like an aid from the mayor's office, like come yeah. with them, like because they had helped them like to find this guy. Well, and, and also uh, they wanted to be able to be like the mayor is OK with it like the mayor gave us his blessing that's right um and they get there and uh you know they blur out they 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 go up to like the window of the car and uh, like the window of this building and they'd say like hey we're looking for eric lopes and this guy's out here just being like hey fuck off pretty much yeah pretty much dude from like the wizard of oz like pops out and is like hey get the fuck out of here you're not seeing the wizard or whatever rocks um (laughs) Yeah, and like you know, they're like, no, we just want to. You just want to ask a couple questions, like you know, we're here on behalf of the mayor. We just want to ask some questions about the the UFO or the 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 Virginia incident. The guy's like, in in Portuguese, he's pretty much like, I'll kick you out with bullets. Yeah, like, just he says that like two or three times. He's like, I will chase you off with. <laughs> and bullets then the only right person now. like hanging around is James Fogg. Everyone else is like, it's time to go. <laughs> pr- no, he's, he's not joking. Go. It's time to go. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, and so James is like, I just want to ask him one question. I just want to ask him one question. Well, he's just probably the only guy that doesn't understand Portuguese. Yeah, and yeah. you know, they're like, "Where, where is Eric Lopes?" And the guy's like, "I'm Eric Lopes." And they're like, "You're Eric Lopes?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm Eric Lopes." And I'm fuck gonna shoot off. you. So fuck like, off. <laughs> yeah, like pretty much, it's just like, what? What's happening yeah, and, right now? And then, yeah. like that, that's the big reveal. Like that's basically all they got. Eric Lopes, the breaking like story from it was like basically like, fuck off i will shoot you if you don't yeah <laughs> and james and, fox was like he was really excited it. he was like really excited he's that like was oh, james, that was eric lopes that was lopes oh that my god was, oh my god we just talked to eric lopes and it's I'm like, like not really. did you you didn't show you any id like that goes down exactly i was saying earlier uh for, for, i was like that went down exactly how I would think an interaction with a strange person that you just rolled up to their house with and it started asking people a, too. with that many people asking questions about alien stuff. And they'd be like, I'm looking for this guy. Like, well, I'm that guy. I am the manager. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like that kind of shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, if that was him, I'm like, that's really sad retirement for a, uh, for a military police officer, I would think uh, that just that area that they were, they were in. Um, but yeah, that's the, uh, I mean, that's the most recent thing that you have uh, about this case. And, you know, that's why it was kind of in the, in the news, like James, James Fox is to, to his credits, a pretty good, you know, hype man for his uh, documentaries. Like he gets, um, he was on, he was on Rogan, right? Like, so and he, that's, he, and he has, and a, that's he has a cheater's name. It's you, you, you see James Fox and you're like, oh, Jamie Fox, awesome. Let's tune into this. No, just disappointed. I was like, God damn, it's not like Jamie Fox. Now, uh, the, the interesting thing is, like, I, like with the talking, if that was in fact Lope, so I'm like, it, it is interesting to me that like he he just will never give any comment. Like, you think if he didn't know anything, he'd just be like, I don't fucking know anything. I don't care. Like, leave. Right? Like he he'd at least let them know. Be like I, but it's like he will not even give a like a nothing if that's if that's truly what we saw on camera was exactly how it transpired. I kind of find that interesting. I'm like, like, is he worried about saying anything? Like, why wouldn't he say anything? Why wouldn't he talk to his? Have his, you have you ever seen partners? plain clothes Brazilian cop videos? Because like yeah. I would think like yeah, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, it's like to even like not talk to your to your. Uh, like to the your partner's family and stuff like to let them know like what happened or anything it's like to me i'm like that for me it just makes me lean into like something fucking weird happened here like 
Yeah, it's still it's guy. still a mystery because it's um, you know at the end of the documentary they're pretty much like it's an ongoing investigation. So I assume there's still some you know there's some effort going into discovering the true secrets of you know I, I guess we're still waiting for some deathbed deathbed confessions. Um, <laughs> you know, at the end of this thing um, to come well, again, out and there was, elucidate the, ev- there on the was, events of Virginia. I think zero new information in moment of contact about this case. There's actually less information than older documents. <laughs> well, like I said, the Roger Lear videos, I hadn't seen those. So that was neat. <laughs> like that was, uh, I, I hadn't seen that thing. I just know that he had went there um, and investigated, but uh, yeah, the, um, there's not a lot of new information. If if you have looked into this, like we have, like, or you like, listened to our Patreon episode previously, yeah, you would have known be, all this. You'd be more. up. You, you'd be up on that. You'd already know. Um, so yeah, it's um, I, it's a it's it's a it's a two hour documentary, so it is an investment time. I watched it on two times speed. <laughs> you you honestly could have cut the first four five minutes. I was like, God damn. Yeah, you could you could have trimmed that doc down a bit for sure. Some of the stuff yeah. drags on for a bit, and I don't I don't. It's like two hours is really long for a documentary. Like, it's like, an, like an hour, like a solid hour, or you break it into two parts. Because I'm like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a it's an interesting documentary. It is uh, to see. They have a lot of good stuff, like with the maps and stuff. Like, kind of, you get a good um, idea of like where things occurred, like a geography of the of the areas that these events took place. Um, um, we you know we we researched this all kind of like in depth before, so. Yeah, for me watching this, I was like, oh, this is stuff that's not, not a lot of this is new. Um, some of these things that had been reported, like, and, and then there was some stuff that they, they left out that we talked about in the, in the confidential. Like we talked, we talked about things, um, about the, the, the telepathic contact that some of these doctors had reported having, um, with the creature that they, you know, had brought with like a broken, apparent, appearing, broken femur uh that they were trying to repair or treat uh at their hospital so i don't know so yeah there were some parts that where i was like oh like they kind of missed that they missed these things it seems to really well um, my thing is i'm I, like did they did they leave that do they leave that stuff on purpose because they just couldn't find enough you know people to talk about it i'm just wondering if they would just like yeah that's true like they might have, like they couldn't find people to talk about it or they just like you know I, I just think you would have they put it in there time, and discount it. Like, they gave airtime to randos on the street when they're holding their signs yeah. that had literally like barely anything to fucking happen. Well, so I so then know. I then it wonders. Then I kind of wondered. I'm like, well, was he leaving that out because, like, he's like that's where he draws the line of like what he thinks people believe. Like people believe a contact story. They will believe that kind of stuff. But well, it seems like if you live in Virginia, you believe it that it really. Yeah, how so I think that's a right? that's a uh, yeah, your economy depends on it. Yeah, so. it's a prerequisite yeah. for living there. Like yeah. you have to. You have to believe that it happened. Seems like, <laughs> but I mean, there is enough. There's maybe enough it really did that, happen, though. Yeah, there's enough yeah. people that like, you know, say they saw something that it, you know it's maybe. What else could it be, right? Like, what else could it have possibly been um, to coincide with a crash and these oily creatures? And now I thought, like, let's talk about the creatures for a second. Like, I was wondering if that oily stuff on the skin was like a protection. Because it doesn't seem like they can really SPF. live. Yeah, like basically to like be in just yeah. in our world. And like I wonder if by you know when you're rubbing, like he's rubbing that oily stuff, but maybe the danger isn't isn't so well, maybe the danger is the like whatever cream they put on themselves to try to survive like outside, right? And they, as soon as that stuff dries out, they're like they die. And then that's the stuff like their skin. It's it, it's not uh, you know what I mean like it doesn't seep through their skin but it does ours our skin isn't strong enough and it got t- the cop that touched him got that in and went right into his bloodstream and so pores and stuff that's sepsis. a good point it j- yeah it just uh, seems so crazy that you could have say this interstellar dimensional craft but you couldn't just have some type of suit why do you need the jelly well but maybe but maybe, just maybe that's just how they advance maybe that's just how they advance the jelly like, is the so suit so yeah the yeah. jelly coat the jelly on. It's yeah. organic. They're it's all like organic people. Yeah. yeah. Some organic yeah. Uh, smart yeah. jelly. It's like the um highly toxic. To us. Us. to us. Not to them. It's a defense yeah. mechanism. It's a defense mechanism. Oh, like that's a poison. poison, this, poison this, they start right. oozing. Yeah. That's so I just want to I want to know how the how the guy how the creature gets so far from the craft. Why was he just like on the fucking 
wall of the Parachuted city. Out. It look, wasn't looking actually, like he's taking thought... a fucking half Hortons on the wall is what he was looking at. <laughs> he I don't think it was like actually that Hortons, far. Actually. I actually don't think it was that far from the crash site. Like it's only a couple blocks away. No, because the crash site when he explains it is in the kind of the outskirts, like a, yeah, but a, a how... big open. And this was like in the middle of the city when they do the reenactment. I, see, I how I thought it kind of looked is that there's a big, there's a big like, uh, almost like undeveloped <clears throat> area, right? And that's where this crash is. And it, to get to, to actually get to it, you have to drive quite a bit of uh, way around. But if you cut from there, you can get into the town, and then where this all happened quicker is what well, where I they did the reenactment. I'm just seeing, the, I'm seeing multi-story buildings, I'm seeing walls, yeah. I'm seeing like city city infrastructure, and then the crash scene is like a farmland with a tiny hut. Yeah, but so I also amazing. wonder. Yeah, it also seems yeah. interesting that as a as a extraterrestrial visitor, like, wouldn't you want to head away from civilization because you're like, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like, he's I'm trying like, to get to the doctor. He's hurt. Yeah, yeah maybe they yeah. truly needed help. Like, maybe like if the, you know, like if you thought you were gonna die on this planet, you're like, F- I hope these creatures here, these humans, can help me, or else I'm dead. Like, I, this is my only option is to go and try to either find some materials f- to to prevent myself from dying or trying to get help and hopefully they have some technology <laughs> that can help me they don't uh they might they must not be very familiar with human with culture Earth. because i feel like <laughs> i feel like that's a real gamble there buddy <laughs> yeah. yeah uh based on most how most strange encounters with things go it's like yeah you'd be lucky if you get fucking chased out with pitchforks and torches Oh, 100%. Uh, straight beating Instantly. to death. Uh, Looking like a little demon. Are you kidding me? No, I know. You're super dead. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, uh, it, yeah, it's a, um, it's still an interesting case. And, you know, again, the, you have an entire town that's uh, like tourism and, and their entire kind of little subculture devoted to the, uh, to the incidents that happen around the county. I mean, it is kind of Brazil's roswell like it is, wa- roswell and they if it wasn't before own, it is it now is, yeah it is now, now yeah you know or area 51 is they got their little alien in alien in yeah ran it? by mercenaries that track you down after you try and go to the gate yeah that too um careful <laughs> don't touch the gate don't, don't fuck gate. around they don't like don't that. fuck around what is what did you um, say to us don't be stupid don't be, don't stupid. be stupid that's right yeah. <laughs> we didn't touch the gate we didn't touch the gate. <laughs> those other guys did uh but yeah i i think um it's still if, if stuff still comes out i mean there's still chances again this is a um this is a very recent uh, encounter it's one of the more recent ones that we ever we that you can cover it is 1996 it is still it's only 20 i mean i say only but it's like 26 years ago um i mean most of the stuff we know. talk about was in the 50s and 60s yeah so I it's like, like 70s 80s you know it's like this is one of the more recent ones that had something that in there like oh like something happened a lot of people saying this and um there are some explanations that are offered up and then um they, you know people say no it couldn't that, that couldn't have been it um you know some uh, some explanations for you know the reasons for the military hubbub is that they were moving medical equipment uh, that may or may not have radioactive parts in it from one one hospital to another or to the to the airport or something like that um yeah. which could be a convenient cover-up story for moving alien bodies like yeah could happen and uh, but it is um it'll probably it, it, this will always be one of those uh cases that i think will always be kind of a staple of the, the ufo um ufo collective lore this Virginia will always be in there in the top ones of uh events uh, well and any anytime a case like this gets like big recognition if, if, if nothing else it brings more people into the conversation like oh what, what the fuck happened there <laughs> found aliens and then you get led down the rabbit hole to find all the other cases so um the document i was hoping to see the video like that's all i wanted the actual video of the aliens that supposedly yeah, exists it's always with that's the thing that kills me with these fucking experts and these ufologists and these guys that make these films there's always this smoking gun fucking tape and they always tease you with it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, this is gonna change the world." It's gonna, but you can't see it. You can't. It's like that fucking old locked away fucking commercial with that old dude with the dollar bill on the end of the fucking fishing rod, and they're just dangling it. It's like, yeah. well, fuck it. If you had it, just fucking give it to us already. Like, fuck. They're gonna release it soon, though. I oh, yeah, man. Like, Real it soon. Literally feels like every single it's one coming. of these guys. Like, 
It's coming right around the corner. Fox has two. He's got this one, and then he's got that Chuck Clark one that he supposedly saw. Yeah, that he says right, that, Logan, that, that Paul. Logan Paul has. Oh, yeah. right, yes. Like, you know, and it's like, fuck. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Like, let's Apparently, talk about it after ours. Yeah, that, that was on the, that was on the Rogan interview. We'll talk yeah, about more. Yeah, uh, right. Talk about that later. Think of it. Yeah. I want to hear about this because I, yeah. <laughs> Sounds nuts. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, Go check it out if you got if you got a couple hours of free time. Why not? Go ahead, mm-hmm. go watch and it. And again, there's there's older there's Discovery Channel ones if you, you can find for free on YouTube that are good. I mean, the production value is you know early two thousands. It's not as good as this one, but a lot of the information and more is in there. Or head to our Patreon, and uh, you could have got listen this to, listen to the OG. Yeah. True. <laughs> Anyways, who do we got this week for Theorite of the Week? So, Theorite of the Week. Okay. Honestly. The father of Dan's baby. Well, I say first, let me, <laughs> let, me, let me presage this by saying that you, you, our fans, you guys, like, to get Theorite of the Week, you don't have to send us things. You don't have to. It, it, it helps, doesn't, Yeah, it doesn't hurt. I, it doesn't hurt. It <laughs> help, but, you know, help. It, there's probably a good chance that if you do send us something cool, you'll probably make Theory of the Week, but it's like, eh, it's, it's, it's a but big effort. Anyways, uh, um, uh, this this week's Theory of the Week, and he, he told me that we didn't have to do it. He told me that, you know, he didn't want to make Theory of the Week, doesn't have to, don't have by, to yeah, by saying, give him a shout by out saying, By saying we didn't have to do it, he just about guaranteed. He you pretty much clinched it. Yeah. Like, you're just like, okay, yeah. well, you know. So uh, this week's Theory of the Week is Jordan Van Wormer. He sent me this awesome, uh, fucking, like, beautiful, fucking bouncing bundle of joy. Yeah, it's hard to see because the the thing here, but yeah, he sent me a, a, like, Mm. like he put it together, model, like, fully assembled model and painted with, like, battle damage and stuff on there that is, like, added, like, after it seems like. Um, fantastic. Lots of time, lots of effort have been put into this model. And, um, he offered, right? Yeah, it's Tall Geese, um, from the Gundam Wing, uh, series. And uh, my favorite, my personal, one of my personal favorite Gundams. And, uh, and yeah, it's like, it's, it's really cool. He offered to send it and, um, you know, he, he does gunplay. Like uh, he's got his own, uh, I think Jordan Van Wormer, he's got his own like, <laughs> like Van Wormer gunplay on Instagram, I think as it was. And uh, he does a whole bunch of paints and, and kits and stuff like that are super rad. And uh, yeah. So uh, this week, the right of the week, Jordan Van Wormer for this bomb ass model. Like I, Oh yeah. <laughs> and if you want to support your show, support your favorite podcast, you gotta to go to aliantheorist.com. You gotta hit the support tab, sign up on Patreon or Supercast for early access. Skip those pesky ads. Hey, the world runs on two things ads or subscription. You gotta choose. We prefer subscription. Uh, this week's newest supporters, we got Selena Savoy. Oh, what? This is a new one. R squared, squiggly line, R dot read. Three. <laughs> nice. There AI. This AI. Is yeah, goes. must be. Julie Zedrick. Firm crustacean. Nine. Nice. Nine. <laughs> That's a typo. We also got Astro Cat. Astro Cat Gaming on Kick, I believe she's streaming. Check her out. And YouTube. And then on Supercast, we got Aiden Shepard, Elliot Green, and Mac Whitehouse. Thank you very much for supporting the show. And as we always say at the end of these things, life will find a way. Perfect. (laughs) See you in after hour.
after hours. After hours. So uh, what now, Jordan? Uh, what's his face? Logan Paul has a fucking okay, so alien video. James, now? James Fox says that there's a video out there, and uh-huh. it's owned by what's the guy's name? Chuck Clark. I Chuck, Chuck Clark, Clark has a video. Let me look it up. And it's the most. It, it, it's basically.